Well, this is it. Going into Sunday, I'm really excited about this one. I'm coming off a pretty good Saturday. Had my game of the year. Got big games tomorrow. Let's start. Green Bay goes to Chicago. Now we may have some bad weather here. You know, it is winter time. And um, here we got uh, the Green Bay Packers, five and a half and 40 and a half. And that's pretty steady right now. We've seen sixes, but there's been money coming in on the underdog. I can't understand why, because the way Caleb Williams has looked the last few weeks, I don't know how there could be much of an improvement. And Green Bay is coming off a bye, so this is a dangerous spot. And they have beaten Chicago, oh, I don't know, 10, 11 times in a row. Pretty remarkable, but Green Bay is five and a half and 40 or 40 and a half. Next game, Cleveland and New Orleans. This is another mystery game for a lot of people. Cleveland is now a one-point favorite at the Saints. 44 and a half. You can see 44s as well. I guess a question a lot of people are saying, how could you bet Cleveland? How could you how could Cleveland be favored in a spot like this? The Saints are coming off the win over Atlanta. It, this is a don't make sense kind of line. But maybe it makes sense to somebody because somebody's putting money behind it. <clears throat> of course, last night they did bet on Tyson. Didn't do too well with that. But Cleveland is one. You know, and actually there's, there's spots out there where I can see Cleveland a half a point favorite. So very interesting, even though the Saints did open two and a half, three. I can't answer all these questions, but that is a little bit of a mystery. The Rams at New England, where we saw the Rams against the Dolphins, and boy, I'll tell you, in that game, the offensive line for the Rams were terrible. Stafford didn't have much time. Now, I know Stafford's getting older. He's been in the league 16 years. He's definitely over 35, 36 years old. However, they're well coached. At least, you know, I, they didn't look well coached last week. I, I will admit that. And I did have a loser. So maybe I'm a little bitter. But the Rams are four and a half and uh, 43. See, 43 and a half as well. New England is paying, playing with passion. They're young. They got the young quarterback. They're not giving up. You know, all these people playing for their jobs. They're not all, they're not all playing for playoff spots. So... They're going to come to play. But the Rams are the favorite. They were six. So we've seen dog money. Six down to four and a half in that spot. Baltimore goes to Pittsburgh. This is a big one. Division rivalry, big dog um, series. Most of the games, or at least half of the games, are decided by three points or less. Over the history of the hundreds of games they've played, Baltimore is three, minus 15, minus 20, which and a three and a half out there in a couple places. So you're looking at three, three and a half. We know the Ravens have an offense. We do know their defense at times can be very lax and give up a lot of points. I mean, they just did beat the Bengals 35, 34. Pittsburgh is now a three, three and a half point underdog at home. The game was 46 and a half. They've gotten money to the over. So we're looking at 48 and a half. This is tough. You got Tomlin against Harbaugh. You got, I don't know what version of Russell Wilson is playing right now because the last couple of years with Denver and the last one or two years with Seattle, he was not playing as well as he's playing right now. Maybe this is the right coach that he needed to get some of that life back. But you are playing against Lamar Jackson, who is incredible. And um, that's going to be a good game. Hell of a game. Las Vegas at Miami. Miami's coming off the big victory. Seven-point favorite, 44 and a half. And you did see seven and a halves. And you still see seven and a halves. In, in which makes it a two-score game. Now you're that's interesting. 
And Vegas is coming off the bye. So you have the cross-country trip for Miami after playing Buffalo and the Rams. And now they're back home. Vegas hasn't been very good. And what Miami showed on Monday night, if they could repeat that, this line's probably short. Can they repeat it off two road games tough against tough teams and cross-country trip against a team that's coming off a bye? That's one that you're going to have to figure out because I certainly can't. Jacksonville at Detroit. And Jacksonville's a team that, quite frankly, I think they should have fired their head coach, maybe their offensive coach, the defensive coach. I don't know what's wrong with Lawrence. Um, he came into the league, but he said this is the next great quarterback, and he has definitely not lived up to that but i will say this and we all have to remember that he has not had good coaching since he's been there now you might say he's getting good coaching now but it's not showing up on the field minnesota six and a half down to five and a half down to six across the board 39 and a half right now it was 42 I'm thinking what they're telling you here is we don't expect Tennessee to score many points. Now, we do know that Darnold made a lot of mistakes last week for Minnesota. They should have won the game by a lot more than they than they did. They had almost three or four, well, almost four to one in yardage. But they did turn the ball over quite a bit. Minnesota is the better team. The question is here, can Tennessee find? Because a lot of people thought Tennessee was going to be pretty decent, not great. I mean, they're two and seven on the year against Minnesota seven and two. I expect Minnesota to bounce back with a big effort here. Can they cover a full touchdown on the road? They can if they play well. Jacksonville, or not Jacksonville, Indianapolis at the Jets. Two very marginal teams. The Colts are switching back to Richardson. They're they're putting Flacco back on the couch. This is the, probably the last year you will see Flacco in the league. The Jets, Aaron Donald, or excuse me, <laughs> um, Aaron at um, quarterback has not lived up to uh, Aaron Rodgers, has not lived up to expectations. Is he too old? Did he not recover properly from the Achilles? The owner changed, fired Salah. Since they fired Salah, they've been a mess. And Salah was a great defensive coach, so he probably had a lot of influence on the defense. And they've fallen apart. They go out to Arizona. God only knows why they were favored in the Arizona game. I have no idea. They gave up 31 points in three quarters. They, Arizona they didn't even hit a full game to score 31 points. And they didn't score much. So this is really a mess. Four and six team against a three and seven team. Richardson is not um, lived up to expectations, but this is a guy with a lot of physical talent, didn't have much experience in college. He may not be getting the proper coaching here in Indianapolis. They have been known to screw up quarterbacks. Um, yeah. But you're looking at the Jets four points in this game. Pretty much across the board, you can see a couple three and a halves and the total 44. I have no idea who's showing up here. No idea. Seattle and San Francisco, big game, very big game. DK Metcalf should be back for Seattle. Seattle has a revenge in this game. This is a division rivalry. And Seattle's four and five. San Francisco five and four. Purdy hasn't been playing poorly, He's, but the team has been a little bit of a mess this year. Is it the Super Bowl loser hangover? I don't know. They did have offseason issues with a Ook and all these other guys not wanting to sign the contract issues. CMC doesn't play until last week. San Francisco is a powerhouse when they play it, right? And, they got to get their uh, special teams together because they've been making a lot of special team mistakes. Seattle 
is uh, okay. San Francisco six and a half point favorite. It was seven. You look at it a little juice extra on that. It could go. Eh, I'm saying six and a half is a solid number at this point. Forty eight and a half. I would expect points in this game. I would think so. Atlanta, Denver. Atlanta is an indoor team playing at Denver where you can get weather. And you really can't predict it because it can change very quickly. Denver should have beaten Kansas City last week, except for the block field goal at the end. They really played hard. Sean, Mc... Sean Payton has them playing very well. Knicks might be the second best rookie to come out of college from last year. It's not Williams. It could Daniels. I think you still got to give him number one, but Knicks is right there. He's right there. And they are playing well. The game opened two. It's one and a half now in some places. So there has been money. Denver is the two. Denver is one and a half now. There has been money on Atlanta. But that's an indoor team playing across country. And they're going to get pressure. But they're not going to get pressure on Knicks because they don't pressure the quarterback very well. That gives Knicks a clean pocket. Time to throw, time to pick apart the defense. The very, very dangerous spot for Atlanta, even though they're coming off the loss to the Saints on the road last week. So very dangerous spot here. Atlanta is six and four. Denver is five and five. Could be a tough spot for Atlanta. Could be. Another big game. Kansas City goes to Buffalo. Kansas City 9-0, Buffalo 8-2. Buffalo is 2.5, 2. Total 46.5. Buffalo has a bunch of injuries in key spots, defensive and offense, where Kansas City is healthier. But they've been playing sloppy. This team does not cover spreads. But they're never an underdog. They are now. And then the underdog role, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, are basically unbeatable. However, there's a small spread. They're going to have to win the game most likely in order to cover the spread. Most likely. The total is 46 and a half. Andy Reid was upset. Even though they won the game last week, he calls the team in. He rips them. They're not playing up to par. They're not playing up to their potential. They're winning and they're celebrating and da 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 da. And they're supposed to go back to the Super Bowl, but they are not playing championship football, even though they're nine and zero, because they know how to grind. Spagnola is one of the best defensive coordinators in football. Andy Reid's top of the line in coaching. Mahomes is Mahomes. We know that. Pacheco is back. He could play. Nobody, no guarantee. A lot of times these are game time decisions. But Buffalo has injuries. And that could compromise them. Very, very big game. Very big game. Houston. No, excuse me. I skipped one. Cincinnati at the Chargers. Another interesting game. Cincinnati with the dynamic offense. Higgins, and Chase, and Brown, and Burrow, and Man, these guys can score, and you can't stop them. I don't think the Chargers are going to stop them. So if the Chargers can't stop them, and the, but the Chargers don't score a lot, but their defense is tough, and they're playing well. They're 6-3 and three against Cincinnati, 4-6. Three, and six. But if the Chargers can't stop the offense of the Bengals, and the Bengals just go up and down the field like they usually do, they are an over team, then the Chargers will have to score more. That's why we have seen 47 and a half, 48s disappear, and we're looking at 48 and a half. Doesn't make sense when you look at the defense of the Chargers being basically holding people down, but they're not playing you know, bottom half of the league here, even though they're four and six, Cincinnati's a much better team than four and six. So a lot of people might get surprised in this game. Chargers were two and a half. They're now one, one and a half and 48 and a half. 
Then you got Houston Monday night. For me, I'm going to probably watch a movie. Houston, who's been hurt, they're better than what they've been playing, but they've had injuries at wide receiver. One guy's out for the year. The other guy's been hurt every week and not playing. Stroud's having a sophomore regression. And Dallas is a mess. Jerry Jones, owner, general manager, coach. That's, I mean, that's the reality of it. <clears throat> McCarthy is the coach, but Jerry gets involved in everything. Houston, seven, 41 and a half. I think what they're telling you here, they're not going to be a lot of points. And they're giving a lot of credit to Dallas's defense because Dallas hasn't had a good defense. And they've gotten crushed at home. So the reputation of Dallas being a great team, America's team, highest price on the franchise in the NFL. They're telling you something here. I like Houston to win the game. Maybe it's a teaser side, but I'm certainly not laying seven. I'm not having to score. And there are some seven and halves out there too. I'm not having to beat them by two, two, two scores in order to cover. I'm not doing that, but I can't play Dallas. They're not, they're not playing well. They can't run the ball. They're, they're on backup quarterback. Dax out for the year. They've got defensive injuries, offensive lines are not that that good. So I can't play I can't play either side of this unless I maybe put Houston in a teaser. That's about the only thing I can do. But that's my update for now. Philadelphia lived up the expectations. They're starting to look good, and they can run the football. And if you can't stop the run, you don't want to play football. You don't want to play the Eagles. They did win the other night, Thursday. And uh, it was easier than the final score. They, they weren't doing well in the first half, but they tor- turned it on in the second half and just ripped them up. But anyway, that's uh, what we're doing. That's what we're looking at. And uh, let's have a lot of winners on Sunday. Let's have a lot of fun. And we'll check back again next week. Thank you.